Let's take a look at the FPU data registers in this video. There are eight FPU data registers in the CPU. Each of these registers is 80 bits in width and the CPU implements these registers as a stack. Since the registers are implemented as a stack, we need to access them with the stack notation in our assembly language program. So the top of the FPU stack will be accessed by the notation ST0. The next to the top register will be accessed by ST1 and so on. The notation ST here stands for the stack and the number in the parentheses is the offset from the top of the stack. So here when you look at the notation ST0 you are saying the stack you want to access the register which is at an offset 0 from the top of the stack and when you look at the notation ST1 you're saying that you want to access the register which is at an offset 1 from the top of the stack and so on. So let's take uh, a simple example to understand the operation of the FPU stack. In this example we are going to use a sequence of three instructions and uh, we are going to see the operation of the FPU stack, how the stack behaves when each of the instruction executes. So the first instruction loads a value of 1.2 onto the FPU stack. So the way we do that is by using the floating point load instruction FLD and the L here merely indicates that we are uh, loading a double value as opposed to a float value. If you were using a float value you would have used the same instruction FLD but you would have used the S suffix to indicate a single precision value. So in this case we are loading a double value so we use the FLDL instruction and we load the value of 1.2 onto the floating point stack. So for the purposes of this discussion I am going to assume that initially the top of stack was pointing to the register FPR6. So when we see a f when the CPU executes a floating point load the top of stack gets decremented so it was originally pointing to FPR6 now the top of stack points to FPR5 and it puts the value that is the new value that is loaded onto the top of the stack and in this case the top of the stack happens to be pointing to FPR5 so the value 1.2 gets put in the FPR5 register and notice that now the top of stack can be accessed by the notation ST0 and if you had wanted to access FPR6 you would be using the notation ST1 which is the next to the top of the stack and ST2 to access FPR7. So moving on the second instruction is very similar to the first instruction it loads a value of 3.4 on to the floating point stack. Now we use the same instruction FLDL but in this case we are loading a value of 3.4 onto the FPU stack. Notice that when we completed the first load the top of stack was pointing to FPR5 and it had a value of 1.2. At the completion of this second instruction the top of stack gets decremented and it points to FPR4 and it loads a value of 3.4 onto the top of the stack which is the new value. Now ST0 will now be used to access the top of stack which is FPR4 and notice that now if you want to access FPR5 you use the notation ST of 1 to access FPR5. So what has happened in between these two diagrams here is the top of stack pointer has moved from FPR5 to FPR4. So FPR5 was 
originally accessed by the notation st0 now it can be accessed by the notation st1 the third instruction now multiplies the value in st0 and st1 and puts the result in st0 so that's a simple fmul instruction and it has as its operands st1 and st0 so what we are merely saying is I want the contents of st0 to be multiplied by the contents of st1 and the result will be put in st0 so we expect a value of 4.08 when we multiply the two numbers 3.4 and 1.2 so after the completion of this instruction the floating point stack looks like this so as you can see there's really no change in the top of the stack location because this was merely a multiplication operation the top of stack at the commencement of this instruction pointed to the FPR4 register it is still pointing to the FPR4 register but the value in the at the top of stack has been replaced by the result of the multiplication so it had a value of 3.4 at the beginning of this instruction now at the exec after the execution of this instruction it has a value of 4.08 which is now at the top of the stack and notice that if you wanted to access FPR5 since there has been no change to the top of stack you would still be able to access it by using the notation st1 so hopefully this gives you a good uh, understanding of uh, how the floating point stack works so using this knowledge we can now write an inline assembly program which will compute the area of a circle so that's what we'll be working on in the next video